Let us remain standing now for a word of prayer. O Lord, we are grateful to Thee tonight for this grand opportunity to come to Thee and to call Thee our Father. O what a privilege for a mortal to call God his Father. This was all made possible by the the love of thy beloved Son and his sacrifice when he died at Calvary to redeem this fallen race of Adams back to God. And we're so thankful to thee tonight for ever sending him. And we pray that his spirit, which is with us now, will bless us in the further part of this service. Bless the feeble efforts that we put forth to magnify his name. Save the lost, Lord. Let them realize tonight their serious conditions of being away from God in this great dark hour that we're living in. May they come back if they have ever accepted Jesus as their Savior. May tonight they hurry back and meet him again. I'm sure he'll be standing with outstretched arms waiting. May something be done or said tonight that would cause them to act in this manner. And we pray for the sick and the afflicted that the presence of the Holy Ghost will bring faith to the people's hearts that they might accept their healing that Jesus gave to them some 1,900 years ago when he was striped in Pilate's judgment hall. Forgive us of our shortcomings, our unbelief place it under his blood. When we leave tonight, may we be able to say like those that came from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us? as he talked to us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seated. I was talking just a short while ago, this late evening, or afternoon rather, to little Ricky's father. And they're going to have little Ricky here Thursday night on the platform. I'm sure you'll all be glad to see little Ricky. That's the one we were testifying of last evening. They're going to bring him. He was a hopeless case. The doctors would give him up with cancer and even run his little tongue out of his mouth and his little face swollen up. And the Lord Jesus immediately touched him, and he's living today. His father was here last evening and is going to bring him Thursday night with the mother here at the platform, the Lord willing. I have been letting you out so late each evening till I feel kind of ashamed of myself, so I'm going to hurry right up tonight and try to get the prayer line through. I wish to read for a little quotation, which I'll just take a few moments to try to build a context around this that I'm reading for a text. I want to read from St. Luke, the second chapter, the 25th verse. Reads like this, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, The same was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Our scene opens tonight, that great historical city of Jerusalem, some 2,000 years ago. Let's kind of believe it was on Monday morning, just after a great day before of worshiping and as there was in Palestine at that time some 
two million Jews. So there, they uh, was very religious, devout to their laws. And it was a law that had been given them that after a baby was born, a male, after eight days it must be circumcised. And then the mother must offer a sacrifice for her purification, for her cleansing. And being so many children or so many people in Jerusalem at the time and the regions around about, there must have been every morning a long line of women standing ready to offer their sacrifice for their purification of their baby, of their cells from, from having the baby. And this morning was no exception. There must have been a great long line of women. And they were perhaps talking just as mothers do and having their little babies and each one is the prettiest little baby in the world of course as all mothers think of their babies and they should think that and many was coming all prettied up you know for this great event and them that was able to afford such a lamb was provided for the sacrifice. That was for a family that was able to, uh, could afford such. But if the family was poor and could not afford a lamb, a turtle dove would do just as well. I can see down along that long line of women in the side of the temple, pretty little jackets made on babies for their little boots and so forth as mothers love to dress them. They'd waited for the event and it must have been a dramatic sight to watch this. But on this morning, way down along the line, I see a little lady. We'd judge her to say about 16, 18 years old. And she had a turtle dove or two in her hands for her cleansing. And we noticed the little baby that she was packing did not have on a little blue jacket or little needlework clothes. But I notice it's wrapped in swatlings cloth. And if I get the right understanding of what this baby was wrapped in, was some thing is taken off of the back of a, a yoke of an ox that was hanging in the stable, a little cave stable in Bethlehem where it was born. And of course, this little lady, she being believed to have been this baby born out of holy wedlock. You can imagine how the women felt. Keep your distance from her. For she's really, that baby is not really born in holy wedlock because she was to be mother before she and Joseph was married. Keeping their distance but yet in that little Jewish woman's arms, she held a treasure that she knew where it come from. And I think that's the way it is tonight to everybody that's ever received Christ. They might be kind of excommunicated from their associates and from what's called the popularity of the world and they might not be as popular among the the great people of the world as they as they would 
maybe he could have been. But down in every person's heart that's ever held Christ, they know what they're holding. Sometimes they have to bear a name of being a fanatic. And it's been that sometimes the devil has placed that ridiculous name of Holy Roller. No matter what kind of a name they have to bear, they know what they're holding. It didn't bother little Mary as she looked at her little baby and beat him on the chin with her fingers to watch his pretty little smile across his face. No matter how far they kept from her, she knew what she had. That's the way it is tonight with Christians. They know what they've got when they've ever took Christ in their heart. Now the time had come where there was not too many believers left. But God has always had a remnant of people who believed him. And we're told that there was an old man in Jerusalem at that time by the name of Simeon. And he was a renowned old fella. He was a teacher, a master in Israel. Let's say he'd be some 80 years old. Long, flowing white beard and his hair. But he was a devout man. He was a man who believed God and was waiting for God to fulfill his promise. I'd like to stop here just a moment to say this. If you make a promise to anybody, you're obligated to that promise. And if you're a man or a woman of honor, you'll do everything you can can to keep that promise. But it could be that something might happen that you could not keep it. But did you know God's more obligated to keep His promise than you are? When God makes a promise, He's got to keep it in order to be God. Every promise He makes is True, and he's obligated to that promise. If you keep that in mind while you're crossing through this prayer line tonight, something will happen to you. To know that God cannot make a promise and not stick to it. He's got to. And he, he knows all things, so he's infinite. We're finite and can make a promise and have to take it back, but he can't. Because he's perfect. He knows everything. The end from the beginning. So he has to keep his promise. And he's always got somebody who believes that. God, let me be one of those No matter how much you have to be criticized and laughed at, let me believe God's promise and stay with it. And this old man was an honorable man, had a great reputation among the people. And one day, perhaps maybe in the prayer room or in his study, The Holy Ghost came to him and made him a promise and said, Simeon, you're not going to die until you see the Christ. He believed it. He had a right to believe it because the Holy Spirit had given the promise. And the Holy Spirit who gave him the promise was obligated to bring him to Christ when Christ came. That's the reason that you're here tonight. For divine healing. 
is because you believe that God made the promise. How many believes in divine healing? Which you know, David said one time, when the deep calls to the deep. If there's a deep calling, there's got to be a deep to respond to that call. I've often made this statement that before there was a fin on a fish's back, there first had to be a water for him to swim in or he had never had use of the fin. Before there could be a tree to grow in the earth, there must first be an earth for it to grow in. Some years ago, I read in a newspaper where a a little boy was eating the racers off of his pencils at school. And his mama found him one day out on the back porch eating the pedal off of his brother's bicycle. And they, it was, she was disturbed and she took the little fellow down to the clinic. And as the faithful doctors examined him in every way they could, they found out that his little body was craving sulfur. And sulfur's found in rubber. Now why was he eating the pedal off of the bicycle? Because there was something in there calling for sulfur. And if there was something calling for sulfur, there had to be a sulfur first, or it would never have been in there. In other words, like this, before there can be a creation, there has to be a creator to create the creation. (laughs) And if you're thirsting tonight for the healing power of God, there's got to be a fountain open somewhere. Or you'd never thirst for it. How many longs for a deeper walk with God? Every hand up. Well, there's a deeper walk somewhere. Or you'd never thirst for it. Something has created in you a desire to walk closer to God. Something has created in you a desire to be healed by God. Well, before that could be created in your body, in your spirit, there has to be a creator of that. That creator is the Holy Spirit. That's why you're here tonight. Is because the Holy Spirit has led you here. Now, Simeon read in the scriptures where that there was coming a Messiah. And while he was sitting reading this scripture, the Holy Spirit said, You're not going to die until you see him. He wasn't afraid of his testimony. He didn't care about his prestige. He was telling everyone, I'm going to live to see the Messiah come. Well, now, of course, you know what the world would have thought of that. Some of them perhaps said, the old man's just gone off a little bit in the head. His, his mind's kindly leaving him. And it'll be said about you when people take God at his word and believe his promise. It's so supernatural till it becomes crazy to the people of the world. If they just... God is so much greater in His promises and His power and His being and His living and His expectations of us is so much higher than the things of the world till we become crazy to the world. And has not the Scripture well placed it? All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. Blessed are ye. When you're persecuted for him. Now we see this old man. 
going around and telling people that no matter what they said, he believed it because he had a good reason to believe it. The Holy Spirit had led him and created in him a faith to believe that. That's why you're here tonight for healing. You've read it in the scripture. It's a promise of God. As he read, there's a promise that the Messiah is coming. Then the Holy Spirit said, you're going to see him. The same Holy Spirit, there's no two Holy Spirits, there's only one. The same Holy Spirit that led Simeon to testify that has led you here tonight. There he was. On this morning he was setting back, say, into his study. And all of a sudden something taking place. I like God's sudden moves, don't you? Just shakes you all at once. And you respond to it. Something's fixing to happen. Then Simeon sitting back in his study, perhaps we would say, he reached over into the little pocket and pulled out a scroll. And he began to read it. And it read something like this, Unto us a son is born. Unto us a child is given. And his name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. And just about that time the Spirit must have said, Stand on your feet, Simeon. And without a least of hesitation, the old sage dropped the scroll on the table and stood to his feet. Start walking, Simeon. Where shall I go, Lord? That's none of your affair. Just start out. I'll take the rest of the way. That's what it is to you tonight in a wheelchair. You, caught stretchers, wherever you are. If God's making a lead, the doctor says you're going to die, that's the best the doctor knows. But if something tells you to rise and accept Christ as your healer, start walking. It's his business to take care of the rest. I haven't moved, Brother Branham, for so that don't make any difference if you've never moved. God speaks to your heart, move, move. For sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, 14. And Simeon started walking, led by the Spirit. Here he comes into the temple. Strange enough, he turns, not knowing where he's going, walks down to this line of women. Some of them are here. Here comes the Honorable Reverend Simeon. Walks down along the side of the line. Oh, some of them says, you know, that's the old man at the... Some of them said it kind of gone off of his head. He's got too religious. Do you think tonight that he was too religious? Certainly you don't. He's a saint in our scene and in heaven tonight. Enjoying fellowship with all the redeemed. And as he come walking down along that line, I see him stopped by this little lady that everyone was keeping their distance from. Well, someone might have said, there you are. See, birds of a feather flock together. That's true. I like that too. Come out from among the world and be separated as God's command. Be separated and then I'll receive you. And here she comes walking over towards Simeon as he reached his arms for the baby. Now I can see him as he looks in the face of this baby. He raises his head towards heaven. And the tears of joy must have run over his old white beard. When he said, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace. According to thy words, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. Let of the Spirit, way over 
in the corner sitting in a little darkness of the world with no eyes to look through. Yet she could see better than many theologians tonight in Los Angeles with good eyes. Her name was Anna. She was a prophetess. She didn't leave the temple. She stayed there day and night fasting, praising God, waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And the Holy Spirit must have said, Stand on your feet, Anna. She didn't have any eyes. She was blind. Here she come, weaving her way through the people, led by the Holy Spirit. What, what, what Holy Spirit was that? The same one that led you here tonight. Still moving on, sons and daughters of God. Led by the Spirit as she moved along. She come close to the baby and raised up her hands and blessed God. If the Holy Ghost could take an old blind woman in the corner and lead her to the Christ, how much more should he lead us tonight? Led, moved. God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Just a little personal testimony if something comes in my mind. I was coming from Dallas not long ago, a few years ago. And there come a storm in the air. And, and I was on one of the airlines and it come down at Memphis. And so they told me to go up to the uh, limousine was taking me up to the Peabody Hotel. It's a great place. I thought that would be good if at least one time I get to stay in a big hotel. So they just going to pay for it. So they tuck me up and give me a nice room at their expense. So after I would got settled down, the phone rang. I was writing some letters and fixing to read my Bible and then pray and go to bed. I said, Reverend Branham, the plane will be leaving in the morning at 7 o'clock. This flight will not go out until 7. The limousine will pick you up at 7. I said, very well, sir. I hung up and finished my mail and prayed and went to bed. And I had him to call me and early the next morning I got up and I thought, I don't want any breakfast somehow. I just feel like it's a beautiful morning. The sun had come out real pretty. This is springtime. So I thought I'll run down real quick and find a post office box and mail these letters before the limousine picks me up for the airport. And I started out with the letters in my hand going down the street and, and all of a sudden something said, stop and go back the other way. Oh, I thought maybe that was an impression. Why would I want to go back that way? So I just kept on going and it got stronger and stronger until I said, I must pray this might be the Holy Spirit. And there was, happened to pass by a shop that had fishing tackle in it. So I went up in the little doorway there to look for the fishing tackle or act like I was looking for it. And I seen the big Irish cop over there giving signals and letting the people cross. No one around me. And I bowed my head and I said, Lord, was that you speaking to me to go back? And something said, turn and go back. I was sure it was God. I believe that people who are born of the Holy Spirit understand what I'm talking about. Just something impressing you so not an audible voice or a vision but just something that impresses you people are born set in the church to see visions and so forth but the Holy Spirit works in many different ways and it's just as real the Holy Spirit one way as it is the other way it's all the Holy Spirit so I turned and started Walking, walking, and I just kept on walking. Finally, I found myself down in the colored district. 
I looked at my watch and it was ten minutes after seven. Oh, I thought I missed my plane. But something just kept urging me, go on, just keep on moving. I trust that that same spirit tonight, when you're prayed for, whether you are prayed for, you're at the platform or not, will let you get a vision of Christ's promise to you and just urge you to keep on. I can just move one finger, just keep on moving that finger till you can move a hand. And then an arm, and then a leg, and so forth, and then go on. I feel just a little better. Well, keep praising Him. Keep going on. Don't get off on a sideline. Maybe I'll go back in the prayer line again. That's no good. Go on. Not the way you're going. Just keep being led by the Holy Spirit. That wee little voice, if you just open your heart, you'll hear it. Notice, as we went on down the street, he and I, he was leading me along and Oh, it was a beautiful morning. The sun was rising high now and the, the roses was blooming down in the little clusters of the rambling rose and so forth. And the fresh rain and the sun coming out had brought the fragrance of the honeysuckle. And it was a, a beautiful morning. And I was going on there. I did not know no more where I was going than, than I would know if I'd start out vice versa from the, my hotel tonight. Just going along, led by the Spirit. And I thought, oh, I've done missed my plane, so I'll just catch another one. I'm in no hurry anyhow. Got three or four days for another meeting. I just kept on walking along, just thinking, Lord, I don't know where you're taking me to. Maybe a place of prayer. I passed by a bunch of little shacks, like where the, the some of the colored people live. I looked leaning across a, a gate. And to my dear, loving, colored friends tonight, me trying to impersonate this woman's voice now, I'm not trying to make uh, light of your grammar because mine's worse than yours. But she was leaning out a typical Aunt Jemammy with a, a man's shirt tied around her head. Great big fat cheeks. And she was looking down the street when I come up. And I was singing that little song that you Pentecostal people sing about I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. I believe that's the way it goes. They were gathered in the upper room all praying in His name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and power for service came. And what He did for them that day He'll do for you the same I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. And I was trying to learn that little song. I was going along, humming to myself. And I noticed this old lady as she looked across the gate, great big smile across her face. I stopped humming, started on by. She said, good morning, parson. I said, how do you do, Andy? She just started grinning the great big tears running off of those cheeks. I said, how did you know I was a parson? Now, parson means a minister. And she said, I know just coming. I said, how, Auntie, how did you know I was coming? She said, well, I'll tell you how it was, parson. She said, did you ever read that story in the Bible about the Shunammite woman who the Lord gave a baby by the promise Elijah the prophet gave her. And I said, oh sure, I'm well acquainted with the story. They just preached on a few weeks ago. Well, she said, I was that kind of woman. And I didn't have any children. And, and her husband and I wanted a baby so bad. And I prayed and the Lord gave me this baby. And I told him I'd dedicate the baby to him and said, I was washed over the washboard, Parson. She said, I was a washwoman in this district. And she said, I, I raised that boy the best of my knowledge to love the Lord. She said he got out in the wrong company and he'd taken a social disease. We didn't know nothing about no social disease. 
And our boy got sicker and sicker, and finally we take him to the doctor man, and he said, "There's no hopes for him. He's gone. That the the venereal disease had got into his bloodstream and eaten up the parts of his heart. And when his blood would pump up, so much of it drop back through the valves, and his heart was eaten off by the disease. And said the doctor man said there was no chance for him." And said he's laying in there on the bed, and said he's been unconscious now for two days. And said, I just can't stand to see my baby die like that. And I prayed all night last night, Lord, you just give me the baby, but where is the Elisha? You can imagine how I felt. I thought, Lord, is this it? I never said a word. I said to her about being led over there. I said, my name is Branham. Did you ever hear of me? She said, no, sir, I don't believe I ever did. And I said, well, how did you know I was coming? She said, I went to sleep about three o'clock this morning. And I dreamed that I saw a man coming. Wearing a little tan suit with a little western hat stuck over on one side of his head. He had some letters in his hand. Instead, the Lord said, go out and wait for him. She said, I've been standing here ever since. I patted her on her back and her back was wet with dew. It was true. And I said, well, my ministry is praying for the sick, Auntie. She wasn't interested in that. She said, won't you come in? She opened up that little old gate with a plow point hanging on a chain. I walked into that little old hut that morning. Little two-room hut. No rug on the floor nor nothing. A little old poster bed. Cracks in the floor big enough that all the wind would just sweep up to it. I've been in king's palaces. And I've had the privilege of being in some of the nicest homes, I guess, in the world. But I never felt any more at home in all my life than I did in that little hut that morning. I I looked on the wall. It was not pinups. It was a little motto on the wall. God bless our home. A little old chunk stove set in the corner. And on this poster bed... Laid a fine looking big man, looked like he'd go about 170 pounds and some six foot tall. And he had the blanket in his hand going, mm, mm. Oh, it's dark, he said. I said, What's he saying? She said, Parson, he's been talking about the last two days since he's been unconscious. Said in his unconsciousness he thinks he's in a great sea somewhere, lost in the dark. And he's pulling a boat trying to find land. And I can't stand to see my baby die like that, Parson. She went over, stroked his head, kissed him and said, God bless Mammy's baby. Great big fellow like that. Dying in shame and sin, yet that mother's love went and still a baby to her. No matter how much disgraced he was and how he disgraced the family, it was still that love of the mother went out for her baby. I think of that sometime and think if the mother could forget her suckling babe, but God said, I can't forget you. Your names are engraved on the palms of my hand. So backslider tonight, remember, you can't get away from it. He still loves you. That's why you're here tonight. He's trying to give you another chance, knocking at your door. I got down in the floor to pray. She got down by the side of his head, and I got down by his feet, and I touched his feet. It seemed like it was cold, sticky. Certainly death was on the boy. I said, Auntie, 
Being that you are the mother of the boy, won't you pray first? She said, certainly, Parson. She bowed her head, and you talk about a prayer. You could tell it wasn't learned in some school. It come from the bottom of her heart. Speaking to God, you could tell she had talked to him before. She knew what she was speaking about. When she got through praying, she wiped her eyes, the old apron she had on, and she looked over to me. I said, I'll pray now, Auntie. I put my hands over on his feet. I said, Lord, I don't know what to say. Is this why you made me miss my airplane? To come down here to pray for this woman's boy? If it is, oh Lord, let it be known that you're God and you respect her prayers and her sincerity. And about that time, that big fella said, oh mama. Said it's getting dark, light in the room now, the darkness is going away. In a few minutes he was sitting on the side of the bed talking to us. I rushed out quickly, thumbed the cab went to the airport and when I got into the gate they was making the last call for that plane that God had held that plane on the ground by the faith of a ill a woman that probably didn't know her ABC some poor dark colored woman ignorant as we would call it God grounded that plane and held it there until her prayer was answered he's the same God tonight that he was then about two years after that I was going to Phoenix on the train I was going through Memphis I'd never heard of him anymore and if anyone's ever been in Memphis the train coming from the east pulls into the station like this is going to make about a 20 minute stop I want to get some sandwiches. They tr- cost you too much on the train. About 40 cents for a little bitty sandwich. I get a sack full of hamburgers almost for that. I just keep them in the train with me and eat them as I went along as I got hungry. So I jumped off to get me a sack full of hamburgers. And I started walking real fast. I heard somebody say, Hello, Dad Possum Branham. I looked around a little old red cap standing there. You know what? Batting his eyes, come running over to me. I said, how do you do, young man? He said, you don't know me, do you? I said, don't believe I do. He said, about two years ago, one morning, you come down to my house. I said, you're not that boy. He said, yes, I am. He said, I was a Christian now, serving the Lord. Leadings of the Spirit. That same Holy Ghost has led you here tonight. It's led you here not to go home sick, but to go home well. It's led you, sinner friends, here to go home a Christian, sold out to the things of the world. You backsliders, it's brought you here to come back home to God again tonight. Think of it while we bow our heads. Oh Lord, as I think of these experiences of these 30 years of ministering on the field, I don't know tonight, Lord, where that boy is. You know. But some of these days when life is finished for us both, I'll meet him again. Oh, Lord, while it is light, let us walk in the light of the Holy Spirit. For the hours coming when darkness and gross darkness will cover the people and the land. We ask tonight, Lord, that you would take these people that you have led them and placed in their hearts. That there is a God that loves them. And wants to save them and wants to heal them. Now that you've led them here for some cause... I believe it's because that 
Jesus, the Son of God, is present to take away all the sins and the sickness of the people and to start in our hearts an old-fashioned revival. And may every church throughout the country be benefited. We believe that Thou art here, Lord, and we pray that You will bless our efforts. And now, Father, we realize that Talking is one thing. And speaking of a God is one thing. But when that same God will come and manifest himself that he is alive, that he only died temporarily for an atonement, that we might have these privileges to be led by his spirit. Now may he come among the people with great power tonight. And do and act and show himself alive by the same signs and wonders and miracles that he did when he was here on earth. May he manifest himself tonight to this people like he did the woman at the well. May he manifest himself tonight in the way that he told her she had husbands that wasn't legal husbands. And know the secret of her heart. And she said, we know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. And he said, I'm he that speaketh with thee. Let it happen again, Lord. Grant it to be known tonight also that the same one who know where Nathaniel was and who he was. Let him be made known tonight also. And when those that were on their road broken hearted from Jerusalem going to Emmaus on that first Yule Easter morning. When the resurrection had just taken place a few hours prior to the time. He was among them and they didn't know it. I'm sure it's the same thing tonight, Lord. You're here, but the people maybe don't know it. May you do for us tonight like you did for them then. When you got them in the room and closed the door, you did something just the way you did it before you were crucified. And they know by this that it was their risen Lord. Light-footed, Swiftly they ran to tell others. And may it be so tonight when we leave here. We'll go not only light-footed but light-hearted to tell others that Jesus is risen from the dead. He forgives all sins of the sinners and heals the sickness of the people. For we have seen him make himself manifested to his church. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I think there was a hundred cards given today. I'm going to ask you something just for the sake of time. And for the newcomers who has not been their first time here, I do not claim to be a divine healer. I do not believe there is such a thing. I believe that Jesus Christ redeemed you from a life of sickness just as he redeemed you from a life of sin. If the old covenant had healing in it, the old atonement of the blood of lambs and goats and heifers had healing in it, how much more is this better covenant got healing in it from the blood of God's own Son, Jesus Now you're already healed, every one of you. But the only reason that you can't accept it maybe is to... You want to go through a routine of laying on of hands. That's all right. But that doesn't heal you. You, You're healed by your faith in a finished work that God did for you at Calvary. Your healing comes through that. Now the Holy Spirit has led you here tonight. Why? You believe in healing. 
If there's a fountain open somewhere, he's obligated to lead you to that. Now the next is yours. Now to make it, if he, we could be sure that he was alive. If he's alive, he'll be as he was yesterday. Because the scripture says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was he yesterday? Did he go around with his chest sticking out and saying, I'm a healer? Never. That don't look like our Lord. Our Lord never claimed to be a healer. He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. It's Him that doeth the works. St. John 5, 19, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in Himself but what He sees the Father doing. That doeth the Son likewise. The Father worketh, and I worketh hither too. Otherwise, God showed him by a vision every one of his miracles that he did. Now, trace it through the Scriptures, and you'll find that it's the truth. Only, sometimes the people, their faith touched God through him. Then he got weak when a woman touched him with a blood issue. Caused weakness in his body. But it was all done by vision. What the Lord had showed him, because he can't tell something wrong. He said, I do nothing until the Father shows me. Not reveals it, but shows it to me. Elijah put all the wood and stuff in order to put the sacrifice. said, Lord, I did all of this at thy command. Man just can't go by, do what they want to do in their own will. Jesus didn't even do that. God had a program, and we've got to meet that program. What if you've got an artesian well on this mountain, and... Uh, a crop burning up on this mountain. You can stand and scream all night long and it'll never water the crop. But if you'll work it according to the laws of gravitation, it'll bring the water right over to your crop. That's the way it is here. The Holy Spirit's led you here. Now if you'll work according to the leading of the Holy Spirit that's brought you here, there's enough power in this room right now to heal every person that's here. I'm sure the Holy Ghost is here. Then if he is here uh, to his promise that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. Ask any one thing, agree upon it, it'll be done. Now if we will agree, it would be impossible for me to almost just take each one through this building to pray for them individually. I couldn't do it. But if the Holy Spirit will come... And we yield ourselves. You yield yourself. I'll yield myself. You have a gift. I have a gift. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Then let the Holy Spirit so enshroud us with His power until I won't know what I'm saying. And I'll be able to be so surrendered to Him that He'll speak through my lips and tell you the secrets of your heart. Like He did when He was here on earth. Like he did when Peter came to him, he said, Well, your name is Simon. Your father is Jonas. Said, From henceforth you shall be called Peter. First time he'd ever seen him. When Philip come, he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no God. He said, When did you know me, Rabbi? I said, Before, uh, when Nathaniel come, rather, said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Think of it. The woman at the well... He looked up on the people and they said in their hearts, He's Beelzebub. They didn't say it out loud, but Jesus perceived their thoughts. Is that true? He said, I'll forgive you for calling me Beelzebub, but in so many words, someday the Holy Ghost is coming. Then speak against that will never be forgiven. Let us think of it. And if our Lord, who has led us here tonight in this congregation, which each of us will stand at the day of the judgment and give an account for tonight. We know that. And if the Holy Spirit will come in here and make His self known that He is the risen Christ, every one of you ought with one accord to believe it for anything that you have need of, for the promise is to whosoever will. Now, Lord, it's, I commit myself unto Thee now for this service. Bless these words that has been said, though they were broken up, Lord. But maybe somehow that you can 
place them together and get them into the people's hearts and mind that they might understand. And may the Holy Spirit do this and come, Lord, and reveal yourself to us tonight as that same risen Jesus that is present and keeps his promise. I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. And the works that I do shall you do also. Let the works be here, Lord, that they might know with their own eyes and hear with their ears the manifestation of the resurrection of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus. For we ask it in his name. Amen. What, what age are bees? Bees? Prayer card bees. A hundred of them was given out just a while ago in the meeting, as my son told me. And now we'll start with B number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let them come first and line up over here. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just a ten, and then just a minute. We'll get them all, but we don't want them a confusion. We'll be all right while they're talking. I would like to ask the audience now, and please give great reverence. See, we are in the house of the Lord. You believe that, don't you? And we we must be real reverent and respect each other. And love each other. And show respects to each other. I believe it was a few nights ago here somewhere else that a cripple... No, it's, it's a crippled woman. I believe that was in Jamaica. That she was sitting there and she gave a place. Respect to a woman that had heart trouble. Her place to stand at the line. And because she did that, the Holy Spirit come back around and healed her. That's it. That's it. Love and show respects to one another. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or we want to get lined up ten, the first ten. As soon as they get them lined up, then we'll line up more and then more and then more till we get them all lined up. Now, while we're waiting on them, I wonder how many in the building tonight that's here and sick and does not have a prayer card. But you believe that God's going to heal you. Raise up your hand. You don't have a prayer card now. You have no prayer card. But you believe that the Lord Jesus is going to heal you and make you well. God bless you. Just like it's just everywhere. So while these are, are coming, may I say this to, to you who are standing by one time Jesus was on his road by vision to heal raise up a little girl by the name of I don't know what her name was her father's name was Jairus he was a priest and he'd come to get Jesus to go lay his hands on the little girl and while he was yet coming, someone come and said, don't trouble the master any farther. Uh, she's dead. And the little fellow's heart just about to break, Jesus turned and said, if thou can only believe. But while he was on his road, the people thronging him, there was a, a little woman who knew that she couldn't attract a man like that. So she said within herself, let's take it like this. It wasn't like that. You know the story. I haven't got a prayer card. So I'm not going to be in the prayer line. But I believe that he's God. God's son. So I'm going to go up there and I believe if I can just simply touch his garment, I'll be made well. Are you familiar with the story? And she pressed to the crowd, maybe squeezed between the people until she got to a place and she touched his garment. She went back and sat down. Jesus stopped and he said, who's touched me? And the, they rebuked him, said, well, Peter did and said, everyone's a touching you. Why did you say such a thing as that? 
who touched me. He said, I perceive that strength has gone from me. Virtue has gone from me. And he looked around over the audience until he found the little woman without a prayer card. And he said, about her blood issue she had, said, your faith has saved you. Now, do you believe that he is the high priest today, according to the book of Hebrews? The high priest, he is setting his body, that corporal body that God was manifested in. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now God's in his church reconciling the world to himself. But then when Jesus died for, to make the atonement, he rose on the third day and God raised that body up and set it on his right hand in glory. Do you believe that? He's sitting on the throne of God, the right hand of power and majesty and glory. And then as we make confessions... Then that body stands there as a perpetual atonement. And when we confess that he's did anything, he's a high priest there to stand in our place, a sacrifice, a sacrificed high priest that's standing in the presence of God with his own blood to make intercessions upon our confession. Now here's what you do then. You say, Lord Jesus the great high priest of the covenant, I most humbly come to thee in confession of my sin. Now, sin is unbelief. Smoking's not a sin. Drinking's not a sin. Committing adultery's not sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. If you believed, you wouldn't do those things. See? There's only one sin, and that's unbelief. He that believeth not is condemned already. See? You smoke, lie, steal, drink, commit adultery, because you're not a believer. A believer doesn't do that. He's passing death unto life. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life, and shall never come to the judgment, but is passed from death to life. John 5, 24. All right, have we got that many? One, ten? Ten to twenty now. Let them stand. Another ten. A's ten to twenty. What? Twenty-five. A, ten to twenty-five. Let them come over here now and get in. Or uh, B, I mean. It's B prayer cards. Uh, from ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, on up like that to twenty-five. Then we won't have any confusion. No too many on the floor walking. Now... Do you believe that the scripture teaches that he's a high priest now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? Does the scripture teach that? Well, if he is the same Jesus, the same high priest that walks here on earth, and for me, I don't believe there's any other mediator between God and man but that man, Christ Jesus. That's right. I believe that God made him the high priest, the only mediator between God and man. Now, and then if he's sitting there on the throne to make intercessions, and if you touch that high priest with the feeling of your infirmities, how would he act? The same way he did when he was here on earth, is that right? Then how could he do that? By letting his Holy Spirit so carry us to a place that you would believe it, and by a divine gift that the Holy Spirit has given me, relaxing myself, just making myself relax, till the Holy Spirit would speak to me the very thing that's wrong with you, or the things for you to do, just like he did the woman that touched his garment. Do you believe that? All right, so then don't think of prayer card now. Think of what the Lord Jesus has promised. Now, 25... To 50 and bees. Let them stand. If you can go around to the part of the place back that way. Maybe you, is there an opening back that way? If you go right around through the back way, I believe you can make it a lot quicker than coming through this way. 25 to 50. Let them line up. Uh, the rest of you now without prayer cards, just set real reverent. Watch this away. And if you believe right now, before the prayer line ever starts or anything, he'll heal you. 
Now, 25 to 50, the ushers, that's right, brethren, get them right into the line. All right, as soon as that group clears out, we'll call some more. And if you'll go right out this way, I believe you won't have to squeeze among the people. And now remember that tomorrow night, Wednesday night, is a regular prayer meeting night. Be sure to come out. Thursday night, little Ricky's to be here. And Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, Saturday morning, I'm to speak at the full gospel businessman's breakfast down in Los Angeles. I believe they're having it at the Clifton's. Is that right, Brother Cobb? Uh, Clifton's. And then um, Saturday night back here at the temple and, and Sunday morning at a little Armenian church way down only host by 20 people. It's an old friend of mine. I'm going down to sit in the church, come back, I'm getting plumb away from here. So if we go to one where all the cooperating ministers, going down there just to sit with an old friend of mine. Sunday afternoon, back to the temple. Sunday night, back to the temple also for the closing of the meeting, as far as we know. Unless the Holy Spirit would do something different, we'd keep moving on if it pleased the people. And everything just as it seemed to be pleasing to the Lord. Then we go from there down to San Diego, from San Diego back up to uh, uh, San Jose, and from there home for a few days, and then over it, as soon as Billy gets out of Sydney, I'm going into New Zealand, and Australia, and Siam, and uh, around the world. All right, now from 50 to 100. And bees, let them go right back in the back and start going back that way and taking your place. Now, if anyone here's got one of those prayer cards that's crippled and can't walk, well, let them just be brought right up here, and I'll I'll come down and pray for them. Now, let's us who are waiting now. Let's just bow our heads in the organist, if you will. Give us a little card of that only believe, will you? And everyone real reverent now as we're making the lines ready and making everything just in order as we possibly can to make it easy for each person to get into the line, each person to have their place and position. Now I want each one of us who's not in the line to be reverent, praying quietly. In the next few minutes... Something will take place. I'm sure that it will. And if he will, if he'll come here to the platform and in this audience and do the same things that he did when he was here on earth, make it proving with the Messiah sign that he is still the Messiah. Then how many will believe it with all their heart? Just raise your hands to him and say, Lord, I will. I will believe. Libby Let's sing it right like this real sweetly as we raise up our hands and close our eyes. Now I believe. Now I believe. Lord, hear us. Now.
Isn't he wonderful? Ah, uh, we're going to start the prayer line just in a moment. Now I want to ask you, this great host of people that's lined up along the side. There's no doubt but what many of you are acquainted with the ministry that the Lord Jesus gave me. As I tried to explain it last night, that I used to be, when the first vision broke, I could not stop those visions, they just kept coming. At the criticism. I didn't pray for enough people. My ministry does not mean praying for a group of people. Laying hands on people. My ministry, the sign, is not that I should lay hands on people. It's for you to believe the Lord Jesus is present and accept it that way. See, I love it that way. If I lay hands on someone and they get well, somebody might say, You know, Brother Branham laid his hands on me. Really, that didn't have nothing to do with it. I'd rather somebody else lay their hands on you out there. Jesus is the hands that you're expecting to be on there. So I have nothing to do with it, see. And if I could just carry my ministry in America like I can overseas, I can have them bring two or three people to the platform and those things can take place. And honestly, there'd be from twenty to 30,000 people healed at that one time. I've got the... A man's name here, the uh, governor or something of the island I was just on, when he said, said, that's the way we wanted it here. Said, evangelist comes and lays hands on the sick. Then when he leaves, said, looks like God leaves. But said, on your ministry, Brother Branham, you had us, let us know that God's with us too. We lay our hands on one another. See, I just get him, the people up there and I say, now I can't even speak your language. Now, if the Holy Spirit will reveal to me something here that you know I know nothing of, will you believe it? Yes, they'd believe it. And then the Holy Spirit come and reveal that. Maybe go out in the audience and pick up a person like that. Oh, my. That's all it takes. They just leave their wheelchairs, cot stretchers and everything. That settles it. I say, lay your hands on one another. And let's, don't you pray for yourself. Now, you pray for the one that you've got your hands on. They'll be praying back for you. The Bible said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who? William Branham? No, the believer. He that believeth. So you are a believer. You've got a right to lay hands on somebody. Just recognizing the presence of Christ. Now we'll run this long line again tonight. And maybe one night this week I'll go back and catch over the old line again. And just bring some fundamental facts on that that you can see from the scriptures that Christ died for you. And it's your faith that makes you well. God bless you, my dear friend. I see they're still trying to get them all in line back there, so I'm waiting just a, a few minutes to see if they still got them lined up. Now, let's bow our heads just a moment now while we make ready. Set reverent now, waiting, each one now, waiting on the Holy Spirit. Now you that's in the prayer line, if you've got any unconfessed sin in your life, just be it known unto you that God will never heal you as long as you've got unconfessed sin in your life. And that's why I take that line real slow, the old line, for the Holy Spirit would reveal to me. And all you're a witness of that, how sins has been called out of people, told them, and this woman here in adultery, this man sitting up here, you know how those things has been. And that's the reason I combed the case real close before I tried to pray a prayer of faith for him. Because what if God put that, the devil put that sickness on them to bring them to discipline, and here I come around with a divine gift of faith and tuck it off of them. See, I'm in trouble with God, like Moses who smote the rot instead of st speaking to it. Now, see what trouble you get into? So now remember, tonight I'm just praying, laying hands on the sick. 
If Christ will come and manifest Himself here now, and if I feel down along the line that He wants me to stop with somebody, I'll do that. But otherwise, I'm just going to start praying for the sick and just letting it go at that. Now, and if you've got unconfessed sin, remember, be it known unto you, I'm not responsible. I'm putting it right back in your lap now. If you've got unconfessed sin, you walk right out of the line and make that right with God before you come through this line. And the Lord will bless you for that if you'll be that sincere. But if you're prayed up, all right. Now let us all pray. Lord, with our heads bowed, just now it's got to be known that your scripture's the truth and I've told the truth of it. Or either I am wrong and a false prophet or your scripture has misled us. Now, Lord, we know that that's not so. We know that your scriptures are truth. But now we have spoke and read of your promises. The thing is now, is it so? Are you alive? Are you here? Do you keep your promise, Lord? Or oh, I feel sacrilegious to even in prayer make such a statement. Lord, you do keep your promise. Every one of them truly. It's our unbelief that separates us from your promises. Now I pray, Lord, that if you'll manifest yourself tonight before the people, I ask that you'll take all the unbelief away from them. And this might be the greatest night of healing that this temple has witnessed since the days of its founder. Grant it, Lord. I pray this prayer for the glory of God in these last troublesome days. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now I guess the line. There's many missing out of the line. My son said there was many, many missing out of the line. Anybody that's got prayer card B, 1 to 100, take your place in the line. Your, your liberty to do it. B, 1 to 100. All right. Number one. All right, you just stand right there with that microphone, if you will, lady. Now, just before, and I want everyone, Reverend, and how many out there will pledge they'll be praying for these people? This is somebody's mother, somebody's dad, somebody's daughter, son. And get her a chair. Just let her sit in the chair. The lady's so weak, she can't stand up. Now, being that she is weak and the first person in the line... I'm going to talk to her just a moment. Now, sister, you're, I know you're bound to be sick or you wouldn't be standing there like that. So, um, if I walked over to you and said, I'm going to put my hands on you. Praise God. You're going to get well. You should believe that. Yes. Because it's a, it's a, it's a gospel truth that we have that promise. But you would wonder then if that was the words of Brother Branham or if that was the words of the Lord Jesus. Now, but if he'll come here and would reveal to me what you're here for. We're strangers to each other, I suppose. If that's right, would you just raise up your hand or can you? Uh, all right, we, this is our first meeting time. Now, the audience can see that. I do not know the woman. have never seen her in my life. And this is our first meeting time. Now... If Jesus will do... Here's a man and a woman. St. John 4 again, just to start with. If the Lord Jesus will tell me something about this woman, something that she has done, something that she ought to have done, or something that's wrong with her, something that, that she knows that I don't know, let her be the judge, whether it's truth or not. How many of you will believe that it comes from Jesus Christ according to His promise? Now, here we are both, and here's the Scripture. The Bible, on the sacred desk, we know not each other. And then if he'll do that, I, usually I just take one by one, right down to the time I get seven or eight, I'm so weak I can't hardly stand here. So that way while I let 
one, then go ahead till it get built up again, then maybe stop another, and then go ahead and just keep on. But the same Holy Spirit is here that he's bound to be here somewhere. He couldn't do that. Is that right? He's got to be. So the people in America rally to put their, to lay hands on him. So that's all right. Now may the Lord grant it, sister. I'm just going to talk to you like our Lord did the woman at the well. And this is our first time of meeting. We don't know each other. But I pray that God will reveal to me what's your trouble. And, and you be the judge. The lady is suffering. She's tremendously nervous. Right at the near of a breakdown. That's true, isn't it? Now, she doesn't look it in her face. Nervous persons are usually skinny. You might say, Brother Bram, you guessed that. All right. Just to take every scruple from you now. Let's talk to her again. Now, be real reverend. I don't know now what he told you was wrong, but whatever it was is the truth. You're the witness. Yes, I see her shaking, trying to hold something, dropping it. His nervous condition. That's right. A nervous condition. And then you have a, you have complications. Just many things is wrong with you. And you, you've got a, a trouble in the inside of you. A, a tumor. And that tumor is in the bowels. Is that's right. If her operation. Now, something's happened, and you know it has. <laughs> so now you can go home and be well. You can walk off the platform now. And, um, now, do you believe with all your heart? See, just that poor thing's faith healer. Now, we thank the Lord for that. <laughs> all right. Now, do you believe he's here? Now, have faith. Don't doubt. Just believe all things being possible now. Get your position. Sit still. Be real quiet and pray. Will you come, sir? Lord Jesus, I bless this, my brother, in prayer. And may he be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful God, I pray that in Jesus' name that you'll bless this, sister. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, I ask you to bless and heal this, my brother. Just go eat now. It's done. Let you. Your stomach trouble. The arthritis also. Just keep moving. Have faith now. Believe with all your heart. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, bless our sister and healer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, sir. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless this, our brother, and heal him. Amen. Oh, Lord, bless our sister and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I pray that you'll bless sister and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't doubt now, sister. If you don't doubt, she can be healed. Lord, I pray that you'll heal this dear sister and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll heal this our sister. Amen. God bless you, sister. Do you believe with all your heart? Amen. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is near? Oh, Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ that you will heal our sister and make her well. Amen. Just a moment, something happened in the audience. A different woman from this. The woman's sitting there with a little white flower on her dress that's got heart trouble. If you believe with all your heart, Jesus Christ makes you well, you can go home and be well. Amen. Do you believe, lady? Do you believe me to be his servant? If God would reveal to me what you're here for, would you believe me with all your heart? 
You're suffering with a nervous trouble, for one thing. You have kidney trouble, for another thing. That's right, isn't it? And you're fixing to go for an operation. That's on your foot. It's a growth in your foot. That's right. If God will tell me what your name is, will you believe me at all? Will believe it won't have to be necessary to do that? All right, Ruth, you go home and get well. <laughs> Jesus Christ, make your home. Well, you believe that old diabetes is leaving and you get well, Uncle? Go on your road and rejoice and say, Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Oh, Lord, bless my brother and heal him in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, sister. Lord God, heal this back trouble with her and make her well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come. You going to believe now to go make it well? Lord, I pray that you will bless them and make them in Jesus are you going to believe, brother? Come here. Upon the authority of God's Word, the power of this holy church praying, all of us together in the presence of Jesus Christ who's here, you'll have to get well. If you'll halfway believe it. Lord, I lay my hands upon the man in commemoration of thy Word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Bless you, brother. Come, brother. Lord God, bless our dear brother. And as I lay hands on him, may he never be crippled up with this demon. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Come, sister dear. You're bleeding. Well, look at the people praying for you. Hundreds and hundreds of prayers going for you right now. The Son of God, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, right here moving in among us. Lord, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well. In Jesus' name. God, I pray that you'll bless our brother and make him well in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, little lady. You believe if God can tell me what's wrong with you, you help you? All right. It's female trouble. So, is that's right, isn't it? Well, just go on. You're healed. Amen. Oh, God bless you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal this little lady and make her well in Jesus' name. Come, sister. You believe that God knows all about you? Amen. You believe, sure that, you believe that God could reveal to me what your trouble is? I certainly do. You believe you wouldn't have to have that operation then? The old gallstones and things leaving you, go yes. home and be well. You believe that? You believe that I would get sight again Amen. and you'd be all right? Amen. You're supposed to be operated on this week sometime. That's right. Amen. Let's see, that's Friday. Thank you. Don't, Thank don't you. believe it. Go on, Bless get well. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal our sister and make her well. In Jesus' name, amen. How do you do, little sister? Lord, I lay hands upon this child and ask for her healing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless this, our sister, and heal her, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I pray for the little baby. Grant, Lord, that this condition will leave the child. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you heard the story of little Ricky last night? All right, let the baby be the same. It's nothing too serious for our Lord. You just believe what I've told you now. Come, sister. Oh, Lord, I pray now as I lay hands upon them, let your power heal them, Father. This is a blessing that I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, my sister. Lord, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well through Jesus Christ. Amen. Believe now with all your heart. Lord, I pray that you'll heal and make well our sister. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now remember, friends, all these people are praying for you. When you go off of here, don't go with that downcast feeling. Go off of here saying, thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing me. What more can he do? There's nothing more he can do. If he was standing right here wearing this suit that he gave me, he could do no more than what he's doing right now. Just do something to make you believe that he's present and he did it. He's already done it. You have to believe it. Lord, I pray for sister that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, my brother. Father God, I pray that you'll heal my brother in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, I pray you heal brother in Jesus' name. Amen. If they could lay in the shadow of a man called Peter, his shadow, a fisherman, eager to unlearn, because they believed that Christ was with him, couldn't you believe when he's manifesting himself like here, these ministers and these people? Don't you believe it? Come, let's lay hands on them. Believe. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will heal them. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will heal our sister in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, 
I lay hands up on sister and pray that you'll heal her. Amen. Lord God, in Jesus' name, heal our sister. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister, Father. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this, our sister. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this, our sister. Leave my sister. Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray you heal our sister. Bless you. Come, brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, heal our brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, heal our brother. Amen. Awful nervous, aren't you? Believe that word you got? He who still the calm the sea can steal that nervous condition you got. Don't you believe that? Yes. Now, you've been waiting for a place to start at. Many times you tried to make a start, like put your foot. You're on it now. Keep walking. In the name of Jesus Christ and get well. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be one The reason I said that to the man, he needed just a little boost. He looked like he wasn't going to catch it, you see. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you heal him. Amen. Come. I go to believe for this child. Go to believe, go get better and get well. You go, Lord. I bless this little boy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you'll let him be well. His mother return back and give testimony of his healing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's over. Just believe that with all your heart. Father God, I pray that you will heal this woman in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you'll heal this woman. I'm my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Amen. Amen. Thank you to help you if I tell you what was wrong with you. It's in your back. All right, let's go ahead. That's right. You wanted me to say that. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come, sister. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may our sister be healed. I just remember when that church is praying, I'm representing all their hands. And as I lay hands on you, that represents hundreds of prayers going for you right now. Just believe it with all your heart. It's a blessing that has to come with their prayers. This church is praying for you. All these people are praying. That blessing has to come on you. I just represent their hands. See, In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. You've got to have healing or die. You know that. God grant that this demon will leave our brother in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And you've got to have prayer too. The arthritis will finally put you down crippled altogether. Lord, I pray that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Lord, creator of heavens and earth, I pray that you'll heal our brother in Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this, our sister. Amen. Bless this little boy, Father, who I bless in Jesus' name. May he be healed. Bless this sister, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll grant it. Lord, creator of heavens and earth, I bless this, my sister, in Jesus' name. My who has badly deformed leg and knee, I come for you. God grant it to your request. His knee and, I mean, his leg and his foot, badly deformed. You believe it, he'll get well, do you? You stood for him and Christ stood for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, grant that our sister be made well. Come, sister, go to believe now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. O oh Lord, grant in the name of Jesus Christ the healing of our sister. Amen. 
you might be thinking those people are not getting that, but there's many of them are being healed. Now that I should know, shouldn't I? From here, that's right. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name that this man will be healed. Father God, I pray that you'll heal this our sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may this woman be healed. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. Praise the Lord. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our sister may be healed. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that our sister be healed. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Sitting right back here on the end of this seat, sitting there suffering with asthma. Do you believe that Jesus Christ will make you well? If you believe it with all your heart, you can have it. Come. How do you do? For you, the, ba- the baby? But it's a little bitty tot. He couldn't understand anything that I'd say. What about you as a mother? You believe that God would let me know what's wrong with the baby? Would it increase your faith? I see the baby shattered for death. And that's the reason I wanted to ask you so it's your faith to raise up to believe. If God will reveal to me the trouble with the baby, will you believe it? I be his prophet or his servant? I, I've watched that word prophet before the audience. See? Or just someone who God is not me. I have nothing. Just just simply an instrument standing here. I don't know you. Never seen you. Never seen your baby. or not, You know that's true. But if God will reveal to me what's wrong with your baby, then you'll believe it, will you? It's a heart trouble. Right? And the doctors don't think it'll live. But your doctor told you if the baby had lived to be about a year old or a little more, they'd try to operate on it. And you're fighting hard for its life. Because you've lost one before this. That's thus saith the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you believe Lord. if I'll lay hands on it, it'll be well? Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, who spared the life of little Ricky, I condemn the devil as to this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it live. By faith, I place the blood of Jesus between this heart trouble and the baby. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May your baby live. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't believe with all your heart. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. Come, sister. God bless you, sister. May she be healed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come believing now, sister, as you approach, not me, but him now, approach the high priest. Dear Father God, I lay hands upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Each step in faith. Glory be to God. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Glory to God. Dear God, my brother on this crutch tonight, I pray that you'll hear him and make him well. That I lay hands upon him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I pray, God, with all heart that you'll make her sister well in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll make him well. I pray, Father God, that you'll heal our brother and make him well. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, I pray that in Jesus' name that you'll make her well. Just a moment.
If something keeps happening here at the platform, it's somebody praying for somebody else out there. I can't find it just at the time. Just keep praying. Lord, I pray for sister that you'll heal her. In Jesus' name. Seems it's coming from in here. There's someone praying for someone. It's a loved one in a hospital. It's got colitis. Mm. Have faith and believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ, may they be healed, Lord. Come, my brother. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life and giver of every good gift, let thy blessings rest upon our brother. In Jesus' name, may he be healed. Amen. Are you believing? Everyone believing? With all your heart? See, sweetly, reverently, but powerfully, the Holy Spirit's here. Sometimes we get it confused by saying that maybe because we got a blessing of the Lord, that's the power of the Lord. No, that's the blessing of the Lord. The power of the Lord is when He's moving, doing something, manifesting Himself. You believe that? Lady sitting there with a tumor playing. You believe that Jesus Christ make you well? If you believe it, you can have it with all your heart. God bless you. You go home now and be well. And there, out here at the stomach trouble, you believe that God will make you well sitting out there on the end? You believe it? And you can go home and have yours. If you can just only believe, God will do great things for you. Don't you believe that? Certainly. Now, how many of you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is setting, is, in, is in this meeting? This is His manifestation. I want you to lay hands on one another. Just lay your hands on one another now. All you that sick. O Lord, the Creator of heavens and earth, the author of everlasting life and the giver of every good gift, we are conscious that your spirit is here. The people is just breathing down deep in their lungs, for they know the great Holy Spirit is moving around in this building. That light that I'm watching, moving like a pillow of fire, hanging into the building. Oh Christ, they know that you're here because you're giving forth the same power, the same blessings. And Satan is trying to hold the people. The only way he can do it is by unbelief. I condemn this unbelief. Satan, you've lost the battle. You're exposed, Satan. Come out of this people in the name of Jesus Christ. May the devil depart, the devil of unbelief. And may every person here be made whole. Through Jesus Christ's name. Do you believe with all your heart you're healed? If you do, stand on your feet regardless of what your trouble. Stand on your feet and give God praise. Stand up. That's it. Give us a cord. I will praise Him, sister. I will praise Him. Come on now, everyone. I will, I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise him for what he's done now. Ah.